So now that we're on the front swing axles, we get to an increasing difficulty in the making of these parts. As you can see, there's a lot more parts than on the rear. Uh, you obviously you have your standard these parts, which aren't the same as on the back, because this thing has to mount to it. There's a couple of bearings in there. Then you have these four pieces right here that allow for the actuation or the swinging. You obviously have the steering bar. You have a UV joint in here. And you have the suspension attachment right there. Now, these parts are pretty hard to put together wrong or incorrectly. Uh, they, they have their place, and if you just pay attention to where they're going, you can get them pretty well. This axle right here is pretty easy to measure out and cut, and this one over here too. Now, the thing about this axle over here is that it actually embeds inside the wheel by about this much and for that reason I couldn't make this head hex as big as on the rear and for that reason it only has one hole going through it which is unfortunate now I would recommend that you d you either drill and tap this hole and then put a screw through or that you just drill it with a three millimeter bit and you put a three millimeter nail that is exact to the size you don't want any slop in this and as you can see I've got quite a bit of slop in there and it gets amplified by the size of a wheel so you don't want that now same thing on the other side it doesn't have as much slop but on the secondary axle back here I actually did use screws and there was massive slop the wheel was going everywhere and yeah I finally noticed that it's the fault of screw so, I, so I'm replacing that with a nail now after I'm done with this video so the suspension on the front ones is actually, the front ones actually have different suspension parts. This is the very front axle right here. That is at the very front of the truck. This one is the second axle. And the reason that these are both different is that first of all, this one has a notch for the drive shaft to go through from the gearbox to the transfer case. So you've got two of those. Also notice how these springs are cranked down to be as hard as they can be because the front of the truck is what has the most weight on it and for that reason also uh, these front suspension uh, attachments up here at the top are closer together than at the back. At the back they're more spread apart. Uh, this is to allow the front to be much stiffer in the suspension otherwise the front would just sag down on the ground the whole time and that's no good. An important thing that you notice is that obviously the axles are slightly offset. They, uh, the centers of the axles are actually offset by six millimeters, which is actually the exact scale as on the real model. On the real model, it is 10 times that, so six centimeters. So that's pretty nice to be somewhat accurate. Now, a word about these steering arms is that you're gonna probably have to measure out and make your own depending on how you do your steering. You might want to use rod ends and ball joints. I've just used a 3D printed part and a ball joint. Uh, it works well enough for me, but that's another thing of realism. I, With the servo that I used, I, I couldn't get the steering as good as it could be. The steering is, is pretty bad on this model, and that, that would definitely be something. But a lot of the steering slop comes from, first of all, these hex pieces out here but it also comes from the way I implemented the steering now the reason that it is what as it is I made about five different steering prototypes each featuring different geometry and different styles I tried rack and pinion actually no I tried you know the usual cam arms I tried uh, what is in there now I tried a bunch of different types of cam arms that I've known about rack and pinion steering for a very long time. Uh, it was actually featured on the Lego model that I have listed as my inspiration in the, on the Thingiverse page. Um, but that would be very time consuming to make and I just don't have the time. So if you really want to improve this thing in some way, uh, remake the steering. That's all I can say. But these parts over here, they're very easy to put together. The only difficulty might be when you have to uh, cut a six millimeter piece of round stock for this right here and then you have to drill and tap it for this M3 screw right here uh, but other than that the UV joint I mean 
they don't break in here. These UV joints are fine because they only have the power of one wheel go through them instead of all eight. And as you can see, I've gotten a bit of rust in here. These are untreated steel gears and they do get rust on them, so don't go too ham in salty water. Uh, let's take a look at the secondary axle right here. As you can see, the notch right there for the drive shaft. This is essentially identical to the front drive shaft or the front set of axles over there, except the side of these is inverted. So as you can see, uh, these ones would obviously face in this sort of thing, uh, where the steering things come together and they are then driven from right here by two different sets of cams or by two different sets of linkages and yeah so for that reason you actually have to sort of mirror these parts right here uh, on the second axle. So now that we have all the axles completed and the transfer case we can move on to the steering which is the next video.